Metropolitan Traffic Commission. Uh, if you are not satisfied with the decision made by the Traffic and Parking Commission, you may appeal the decision by filing for a writ of certiorari with the Davidson County Chancery or Circuit Court. Your appeal must be filed within 60 days of the date of entry of the Commission's decision. We advise that you seek your own independent legal advice to ensure that your appeal is filed in a timely manner and that all procedural requirements have been met. But before we get going, I just want to say, uh, unfortunately, Freddie O'Connell, our council member, cannot be here today. He's fighting high temperatures. But I just want to also thank everyone who's uh, rallied to the cause in Nashville as we usually do. I know one of our commissioners, her office building uh, was uh, impacted by uh, she had to relocate. I know many people have. So uh, the police are always out there helping everyone. So we thank you. So bef before we get started, just wanted to just, uh, thank everyone who's been involved in, in helping get Nashville back together. All right. I ask for an approval of today's agenda. Second. We have a first and a second. All in favor? Aye. Approval of minutes of the February 10th, 2020 meeting. We have a first. Is there a second? Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Approval of the consent agenda. Uh, please note that items on the consent agenda will be voted on at a single time. No individual public hearing will be held, nor will the commission debate these items unless a member of the audience or the commission requests that the item be removed from the consent agenda. I know that Mr. O'Connell had some had some items on here, but I assume that we'll just move forward with those. Does anybody have any items they'd like to move remove or Senate, discuss? Senate, uh, CD19, uh, the, I think the Senate Bill 19, uh, Commissioner Council O'Connell sponsoring that. Okay. Postpone that till he returns. Okay, which one? CD19, the request of which one? A, no, a, a, B, C, D, E, A. A, C, D, 19. Okay. We might have some folks here for that. Is there anyone here to discuss item A? A is a request to authorize a designated space for a pickup station for RTA. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I'm talking about item A on the consent yeah. agenda. Yes. Is there someone from WeGo here? Yes. <coughs> Commissioner Kern. Yeah. All right. Well, so we we need to kind of go through the consent agenda, I guess, first to figure out which items we may be removing, or if we're going to approve the consent agenda. So, I think there is there a request to pull A. Uh, a request to pull uh, A C D nineteen out of the consent agenda. Okay. The okay. So we got a request for A. All right. Wait just a minute. We'll go through to see which items we're going to pull out. Any other items? Studio five. Authorize and always uh, item D. Authorize and always. Okay. We're going to pull that one. All right, any other items? That should be, just go through A, B, C, D, E, F, G, that way. That, that'll make it easier. D, okay. All right, so you would make a motion. I move that we remove from the consent agenda A, C, D, 19, and D, CD05. Okay. So we have a first. Is there a second? second? All right. All in favor? Aye. All right. So we will pull those items and now I'll read the balance of the consent agenda. Uh, item B Council Member Cash is here. This is your item on the consent agenda. Request to modify the parking from residential permit parking to Permit parking only on Bernard Avenue from 15th Avenue to Belmont Avenue requested by Council Member Cash. Thank you for coming. Item C, 
authorize all way stop controls at South 11th Street and Dew Street requested by council member Withers and a resident. Item E, authorize a stop sign at Livingston Street and 8th Street requested by council member Hager and resident. Item F, modify speed limit from 30 miles per hour to 25 miles per hour on Seymour Avenue requested by council member Parker. Item G, modify the speed limit from 30 miles per hour to 25 miles per hour on Dozier Place requested by council member Parker. Item H, authorize always stop control at Barnes, Cove Drive, and Alturas Drive requested by council member Rutherford. Item I, authorize always stop control at Eaton's Creek Road and Old Clarksville Pike requested by a resident. The consent agenda has been read. Is there a motion to approve, please? We have a first, is there a second? second? We have a first and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Congratulations, council member, your permit parking's approved. Okay, all right, item A that, that was pulled is a request to authorize a designated space for a pickup station for RTA. This request requires signage on five metered spots on the south side of West End Avenue at 21st Avenue South to show no parking from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. This has been requested by Vanderbilt University. Who, it, you're here from WeGo? Both are here, for, is anyone here from Vanderbilt? Okay, all right. Can you discuss what this request is, please? Do we have a map, Corby, please? Could you turn your mic on, please? There? Yeah. All right. Apologize. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Felix Guest for that. I'm with WeGo Transit, and I have uh, Gabriel Burgess. He's with operations and um, events uh, management there at WeGo. Uh, this is a request from Vanderbilt. We've been working very closely with Vanderbilt um, for this project, and um, I'm gonna turn it over to Gabe in a second so he can uh, talk more about it. But basically we have regional buses that right now pick up at Vander Vanderbilt University for a lot of our um, riders that uh, come from uh, surrounding counties and work there. Um, and we have issues because we pick up on 21st Avenue and um, sometimes we have buses that have to queue there to pick up passengers and then this becomes a, a major issue for uh, safety, pedestrians, visibility, and so on. But um, I'm gonna let uh, Gabe talk more about it. The other one. Good afternoon. I'm, as Felix said, I'm Gabriel Burgess, uh, Community Service Manager for RTA WeGo. Uh, the reason we're requesting this is that, as Felix stated, that on 21st Actual, we have about five buses to include another bus, which is the train shuttle bus that's blocking the, the avenue to where the uh, pedestrians and also vehicles cannot uh, ex exit and enter the driveways from Vanderbilt. So we've been working with Vanderbilt police to come up with a suitable location. And the location we deem is on West End at 21st to between the hours of three to six. And the reason it would be for three to six is because we have buses that arrive early from their other locations and they need a spot to sit. So this way, if they sit at West End, this would free up the buses that actually arrive on time to pick up the passengers on 21st and take them on to their designated location and to the train station. And then the buses that are waiting on, on West End can turn the corner when it's time for them to uh, pick up their actual passengers on 21st. This is to allow uh, easy uh, traffic flow and also uh, free up the crosswalks that are also located on 21st Avenue. There's two of them. Questions from commissioners, please. Um, my question is, are you going to be on West End at all on 21st Avenue? Where actually the buses will be staging on West End until it's time. So for example, if a bus is due to leave at 345 and normally they arrive about anywhere from 20 to 40 minutes early, they can sit on West End and then pick up their passengers at the appropriate time at 345. So they would turn the corner onto 21st from the staging area and pick up the passengers on the actual 21st. No passengers will be picked up on West End. It's just for 
but this is just to stage there just to wait out their time until it's time to actually pick up passengers. Can you help, uh, this may be Lee's question, um, when does parking stop along West Bend Avenue? That is where the parking At this particular location, parking stops at 6 p.m. It is not traffic lane restricted at that location except in the morning. Okay, so what we're, that would mean is you're getting the flow of cars in that traffic. Is that right? I mean, are, are cars that are not going to be able to use that lane during that time of day? If I remember correctly, there is on park on street parking right there currently. It, that's the inbound side, I assume. Right. It's inbound yes, side. Yes, yes. yes. In the PM, what he's talking about, parking is allowed. Right. In the morning, no parking, but they're not asking for that. No, no, just in the afternoon. And we also have a bus stop in that lane as well on that actual corner. So we'll be a couple spaces back behind the bus stop. And again, it's only just between the hours of three to six. And the reason why we said three to six was to allow to stay within the time frame that of uh, Vanderbilt already has it reserved for other uses, but we would not use it. A, on a concurrent basis. It's not all the time that all the buses will be there. Buses are getting better, but it's on those days when we have special events, we have hectic weather, and sometimes those drivers arrive early, and it's not every every day, so it'll be sporadic. So, and, and tell me again about the meters. Are we using enough revenue for meters? There are five parking meters there that we will lose revenue from during the hours of 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. That is correct. Is it normal for the buses to arrive 20 or 20, 30 minutes early? Even though it's maybe a special event going on, is it normal for the buses to arrive? Are they missing some other stops or where else along the route? No, they're not actually picking up. These are, uh, we have a, Gray Line is our vendor, so we have a contract with Gray Line to pick up the region, to do regional service for Vanderbilt. These are not uh, your fixed route uh, buses that operate fixed route service. These are regional buses that come strictly to, to get regional riders. And we have uh, multiple routes that serve Vanderbilt, so that we have different pickup times. So some may come earlier, some may come um, later after that. So uh, those queue in the staging area after the first uh, buses pick up, so those then can move into the pickup area later af uh, after the first round, right. round of buses goes by. And it's usually at the start of when we uh, start service, which is at three o'clock, we start, that's when usually those first few buses start to stack up. After those initial buses leave the area, it's spread out and it's back, it's kind of on schedule. Yeah, I, I believe it's already designated as uh, parking during the, during those times in the afternoon. Yeah, usually yes. there would be cars parked there, so that lane wouldn't be open anyway. Please, please make sure you use your mic when you speak. So they're parking at meters, and they're paying to park. Yes, there are meters there. I'm um, sorry, <laughs> we're, both, we're all having trouble today. Um, I was just gonna say, I mean, I, I know there is a loss of revenue from those a couple of spots, but to me, it seems like the more people we can get in and out of Vanderbilt without having to drive and also not having to block the travel lanes, seems like it'd be good for everybody, just the other alternative. So I would I would vote in favor of this and would move to approve. Uh, I, and uh, I, would, I just wanted to mention that uh, I believe there was a pilot period um, a couple of weeks ago where this was tested uh, and uh, in the collaboration between us and the university to see how that would work and, and uh, the reason why Vanderbilt uh, requested these uh, was because they were uh, very pleased with how the operations of, of that took place during that period. I would feel better voting for it if the councilmen were able to talk to us about revenue because that's such a 
it, it's such a critical issue now with the Metro budget. I guess everybody's looking at me for something. Um, we know so the council that member is, is, is unfortunately is not here. That is a valid point. Any Anytime we're talking about that curbside value again, and, and it does have a value, and then you make the excellent point of, but it's for public transportation and public use, so there we are juggling again. So point well taken that the councilman would probably like to chime in on, like you said, it's his bill or his, his thought. Um, are you currently operating under pilot or did that end? I think we're still under pilot until this has either been approved or disapproved. Uh, so help me on this one, but if we were to defer a month, you could continue this pilot for a month? With an agreement from Bandy, I guess. And yes, with an agreement right from Bandy. Yes, with an agreement from Bandy, yes. If, so if you want the councilman's input, um, then we could defer a month if, you, if you'd like. That could be a motion if you want to make a motion. We, we do have a motion. I don't know if it's been seconded yet. Commissioner Kern made a motion. Okay. Appears, is there a second to the motion? Does not appear to be a second to Commissioner Kern's motion to approve. Is there another motion? I move to defer uh, based and to wait and hear from Councilman O'Connell since the pilot can continue, can continue this for another month and see how it's going. Okay. We have a motion to defer. Is there a second to that motion? We have a first and a second. All in any discussion of that motion? Okay. Is there uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. So it's been deferred. If you wouldn't mind coming back, and Chip, if we could get Vanderbilt to come too, that'd be great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your time. All right. All right. Uh, item D, authorize an all-way stop control at Keeling Avenue and Elvira Street, requested by Michael Dewey Engineering. Yes, Commissioner. So it may not be correct on Google, but when I looked it up, it looked to be a curve, a complete it, curve in the road. A, so I just it, wanted it a little a curve, clarification how that would work. You, well, you have, you need the sight distance for your stop signs, of course, and then we're going to put in some stop ahead signs. Um, but we measured it, and this went through our development group. We me measured the sight distance and the sign visibility, and it passed all those tests. Mm -hmm. And um, you might would put an advisory speed if you need to in that curve anyway, mm -hmm. but the stop signs are visible and the stop bars would be visible. Okay. And what's the reason to do that? Is there... That's why I've got a... Our, the manager of our development group is here, and this went through a... This was a condition of a developer. Oh, I see. This isn't a public works project per se. Okay. We do review the plans, as you know, but... So, yeah, Devin, you want to help us out? Odd place, an odd place to have an always stop to me, but I'm not a... Mr. It's Doyle, are you going to enlighten our group here this afternoon, please? Well, the uh, the um, magic of smartphones <laughs> may have informed me what's going on here. Um, I, I didn't have the immediate background, but I very quickly did some research. So there is a development plan um, to tear down maybe the five or six houses to the north of, that's not Keeling, that's Elvira, I believe. Um, there's an SP plan to the north of Elvira, and you, if, you, if you continue scrolling down, you'll see some large green spaces. Um, and so they, they are proposing to construct, and I, I, didn't, I didn't have time to count the number of units, but it looks like maybe 30 to 40, uh, residential units in that little triangular pocket in their driveway is going to connect and form an extension of is that Keeling Avenue correct but it's it's private but it's coming in as a third leg to that intersection so it kind of creates an odd intersection of two public streets that tie in with a private driveway that comes in on a third leg. There, <clears throat> there was no way to straighten the curve. So I think in an attempt to provide 
safe traffic control at the intersection. They worked with my engineering staff to, um, to, to come up with an appropriate regulatory signage approach, which in, in the best interest for public safety, um, the, the conclusion was to implement an all-way stop traffic control at this intersection. I, I can show you the plan. It's on, it's on my iPhone, but I can, I can show you the plan if you'd like. It just seemed like an odd place. I, I, I don't disagree. That, yeah. That's why I was frantically trying to get my mind wrapped around uh, what, what was going on, but right. that, that's the background. Is that more of a construction entrance or a... No, this, is, this, a is, the, the, this is the permanent entrance into, the, into this okay. little development, this little pocket development that's happening. So all, all of the existing homes there will... Well, there's, I, I, don't, I don't know exactly how many. I think, I, I suspect it may be to the second tree line, to the right of where the cursor is. There's another tree line that you see that kind of runs north and south. Not that tree line, but the one to the right. It's a little bit farther right, but that tree line. I think it might be to that extent. Somewhere within, within that piece of property, they're building somewhere between 30 and 40 homes. And their, and their access comes in and aligns with Keeling and, and forms a T intersection with, with Elvira. So. Okay, thank you. How are, I have a question, how are people, are, are they gonna come flying around that curve and then slam on their brakes? Well, I, now, and I haven't seen the construction plans. I, uh, all I was able to look at was th online was the uh, was the preliminary plan. Now I, I'm assuming I'm assuming that the intersection is getting teed up basically, and the curve is being removed. Does, does that make sense? So so that so that it will look more like a typical T intersection where Elvira will be the stem of the of the T. Um. Mr. Knopf and Mr. Doyle as well, do we, when we get into designs like this, ask the developer maybe look at different traffic patterns? Because we, for years we've been saying always stops are not good traffic calming. There's a lot of conversations towards traffic circles or other types of ways to move this traffic around as opposed to a stop. And I'm just wondering if we're gonna have development here, could we not explore alternatives? Uh, and we do. Now we have to do it at the staff level. Well, I, I mean, I, I guess technically we, we, we have the authority to require a traffic engineer. The, the project was, when you get into a 30 unit development from a traffic perspective, that's it's a relatively small project, um, but we do, entertain those conversations and we do some exploratory analysis. Now, because of the properties that this uh, particular developer owns, th they don't own the properties to the west and they don't own any of the properties to the south of Elvira. Um, so they would have had to have done probably some like a roundabout, something of that nature, uh, some significant realignment of, of El, Elvira. Not that, it, not that they didn't have the space, um, but I, I, I assume that just looking at the volume of traffic that uses Elvira and Keeling, that, that they were so small um, that the always stop seemed to be the the most efficient and effective way to, to accomplish that goal. But, but we do look at that. Yeah. Thought I would ask, because the cumulative effect of all these decisions is you have a issue at some point in time. Yeah, I, okay. I agree. Okay, all right. Is there a motion? I'll make a motion to approve. We have a motion. Is there a second? second. First and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, it's been approved. Okay. Next item on the agenda is a deferred item which is to authorize the valet zone for the Graduate Hotel on 20th Avenue North requested by Premier Parking. Is Premier Parking here today? Is anyone here today to discuss this? This was presented to the commission at last month's meeting. They were operating off a temporary permit. I spoke with the gentleman from Premier Parking this morning. 
He did not advise me whether he was going to be here today or not. So if anything, I would recommend the commission defer for one more month. Okay, we have a motion to defer. Second. We have a second. All in favor? Aye. Okay, any opposed? Okay, the item's been deferred. Okay, item two. I know, again, this is in Council, council Member O'Connell's district, but I think we have Mr. Starks here. Uh, item two is a request for the abandonment of the right of way along a portion of the alley number 146 from Lafayette Street northwestward to Elm Street between 4th Avenue South and 5th Avenue South. Easement rights to be retained. This was requested by Barge Design Solutions. Welcome, Mr. Starks. If you just state your name for the record, please. Oh, thank you. Yes, Charles Starks with the Convention Center Authority or the Music City Center. And happy to walk through this a little bit. I understand. Sorry, I could not be here at the last meeting. Was out of town trying to convince people to come to Nashville. Now I'm trying to convince them to stay in Nashville. As we, as we had a lot of conversation here recently, Th this project really started about four years ago, just over four years ago, when we were approached by then Mayor Barry and MTA uh, before they changed to WeGo, but MTA, while well, they were looking at a Music City Central, for lack of a better term, South location to supplement what they've got up on Dedrick and uh, well, in Charlotte, I guess, on, uh, on the north side. And so a portion of this land was becoming available at that time, and MTA was unable to acquire that under the rules that they have to deal with, uh, from, have to have a project in order to get funding to buy land. And so we were asked to do that on their behalf. We were able to purchase one of the parcels that time. And if you look at, uh, I guess that would be 471, if I'm reading it right on, uh, on your map. Uh, which is about 0.79 acres. At the time, there were two other parcels that were uninhabited or not being used. And I'm sorry, I can't make out those numbers, but it would be the ones right where it says alley number 146 proposed, those two of the line between them. And those two owners eventually came to us and said they were interested in selling as well, which made it a really good move for MTA and what would allow them to do on that space in the future. And then Metro owns the space that's kind of the, the bottom right of that. Uh, and then there's one partial left that's about 0.12 acres at the very top right, right there next to where the word Elm Street's located. Uh, and so as we started looking at this, and MTA's plan is ultimately that becomes a transit hub. This was a premier location for them in the sense that part of their mission is this would have tied them in on what they're still working with the airport authority on and trying to come bringing folks down Murfreesboro Road, which turns into Lafayette. And then also, because Greyhound is located right there, that helps meet part of their mission to get funding as well, that you've got a federal, uh, federal line there with Greyhound. So we've acquired the land. Our short-term mission there is that we're going to use, use it for some marshalling, like events that are coming into the convention center, mostly personal vehicles that sometimes get stacked up out on KVB, so we can call them over when dock space is available. And then we'll also use it for parking. There is a buildings there that we'll use for warehousing, uh, which is the buildings already currently there. We'll continue to do that. So once we had the parcels, Metro had the other, it kind of made sense, we thought, to talk about this alley because that would tie, turn the two together. Uh, and so that's, that's why we're here today to speak about that and try to look at closing that to kind of bring all the land together. I do know from Chip that, and I'm sorry again, I didn't see the meeting, but there was some conversation about walking space and biking space, I believe, at the last meeting. Certainly, I know, and I don't speak for MTA's not here, but for Steve Bland, we've had this conversation. And certainly, anything that they're doing transit is all modes of transit. So they're looking to protect, you know, places for bicyclists and walkers and ways to get to their center. If trains ever become an option or other kinds of rapid uh, transit up and down Murfreesboro Road to tie this together. So I don't know. I can certainly, any questions, speak to more than that. But really, for us... We're just kind of the conduit to have this for a few years, utilize it as parking and other space, which we can certainly utilize uh, until the MTA at such time has their project ready to move forward. Thanks, Mr. Sorry Stewart. for the length of that. I apologize. May I ran right. out of time. Commissioner Kern, I know you had a question about this at the last meeting. Yeah, I mean, my question maybe is mostly about timing. Um, my concern is that we have very few continuous alley networks in the city, and this is one of the few. Mm -hmm. And that those alley networks are increasingly important for loading um, more than anything, particularly with you know lift and delivery and everything yeah. like that. And so, I think if it did, when it becomes a metro 
transit center, that seems mm -hmm. like a, a good public use and they would probably not have as many loading needs as an office building. But I was concerned about how likely that was that was and imminent in the future compared to uh, now. And if it didn't happen, if that that consolidated property then got used for something else, and so we lost the alley. Well, um, well certainly we've we've purchased the property, so as you know, quasi kind of public agency, mm -hmm. much like MTA with the convention center authority. So for us, you know, our our plan certainly is hopefully that MTA is able to get funding for this and it moves forward in their transit because number one, that helps our workforce development and for folks working and living downtown. So we're all we're all for that. That's part of the reason we're really interested in this project. Certainly for us coming in, what we'll do with the land and using it for parking and marshalling, uh, it's not for loading and unloading there in that alleyway. I mean, it wouldn't be used for that. There's nothing that we'd be doing during that time, at least for that portion of it. And the owners of the, and, and I'm sorry, I don't remember his name offhand. The owner of the other piece of property is still there is the, is kind of a cigar bar lounge and then they've been fine with this as well. So their loading and unloading happens on the street actually, what limited they have, because their doorway is actually at 4th and Elm. So they don't come in, they don't even have a back door to come in for loading and unloading hardly on that uh, that site at all now. So right. if that if that answered, I'm sorry, um, if, maybe I missed, the, yeah. if I didn't miss the point there. I guess it, it, does, it does kind of address it, but um, my question is why do you need to have the alley abandoned now before there's a project? A specific project apart from just parking, um, and would it be possible to wait to make sure that it actually did end up being used for that? Because um, I know I know funding for yeah. MTA is hard, and sure. it's probably not going to happen imminently. C cer certainly for us, and trying to get more cars off the roads that are sitting waiting to get into the dock, this allows us more parking spaces. So yeah. it certainly gives us more ability to get vehicles off the road that are currently setting and waiting in many cases, and provide more parking in that immediate kind of downtown area. So the number of spaces that we can work out there is what's advantageous for us. Something that we would use over until MTA. I mean, ultimately, you know, we certainly hope MTA moves forward there. If they don't, hopefully someone else will have a great use for that. It was long term for us. We're not going to build a convention center space there. I mean, it's too far from our building. Uh, but certainly we got to wherewithal to sit and wait for a number of years on MTA to see what happens there. Yeah. Do you need to have the alley abandoned in order to park cars there? I mean, my from my sense of the space now, it's already kind of, you can't tell there's an alley necessarily. Um, yeah, yeah, you really wouldn't. I, I believe we do have to have the alley abandoned to park vehicles there. So I understand from barge and what the law requires. I'm not. I just mean on the site itself, not necessarily on the alley. All right, is there someone, someone's raising their hands. If you would yeah. come forward, please, and state your name and. Hey, Michael. Good afternoon. Hey, I, I, I'll, and I want please to turn your mic on, please. Yeah. Yeah, I, I wasn't here to talk about this at all today. I use that alley all the time. Mm -hmm. That that alley is your only alley from uh, Korean you veterans. You state your name for the record. Michael Hayes, CB okay. Raglan Company. It's a very effective alley that anybody who leaves Rocket Town on the weekend uses the alley. Anybody who leaves Martins uses the alley. Well, no, that's the alley that's on the other side of Elm. That's the alley that goes between Lee and Elm. Like, so I'll leave Rocket. I go to lot Rocket Town every Saturday. Right. Yeah. And I pull out and I go straight down the alley to Lafayette. Oh, okay. I mean, that's, it's, yeah. it gets, I don't know how much you actually use, the, like how much you drive through the neighborhood. It well, gets, I'm, I'm it gets this, a fair yeah. amount of use. Yeah, no, I'm a big supporter of Rocket Towns. I'm here quite a bit, actually. So I've just never used it coming out that way. I mean, what I see most people, when they run valet operations out of Rocket Town, we've ran one of those for them, is that generally there's turning out on Elm. Yeah. When they're coming out as opposed to coming to Lafayette. But, you know, I, I, yeah. I, I yeah. was not here to, I was not here to yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. say no, but you said nobody uses it, and I see, no, it, I, I see okay. it get a lot of no, I didn't use say on, nobody. The, I just on said, the weekends. Yeah. yeah. All right. Let me just ask a question. I assume the abandonment of the easement is needed to consolidate the parcels. Is that correct? Yeah. Is right. that, yes. that's what the land that use is issue is? That is correct, yes. and, and, and that's our discussion now. Eventually, that, that's a must do if MTA if the MTA plan goes through. Right. Um, but I think that's what Commissioner Kern is saying. Do we need to abandon it now to stage vehicles? Mm -hmm. That's that's the debate we're talking about. Right. Yeah, I mean, because I think my concern is I I would be very in favor of it if if MTA got the funding and we wanted to put a South Transit Center there. I think that's fantastic. But I think that is still an unknown. I mean, a, ho a hopeful project, but in the short term, it is a valuable asset to the city that once we lose, we never ever get back. Um, and so giving up that asset just for parking in the short term doesn't seem to me to be quite worth it, where it might be worth it um, in the long term when we want to build a transit center. That's, I guess, where I'm, I'm kind of landing. 
Well, ready for this one? This is still just a recommendation to council, correct? Mm -hmm. And just so you know all the sure. rules and regulations, you want to give your speech, Terry? Um, yeah, <laughs> so um, uh, to, this is a mandatory referral. So mandatory referrals that come to the committee, if it doesn't get a favorable recommendation, um, if, if you defer it, um, then if it goes beyond the 30 days, then um, the council can still vote on it. Um, if you vote against it, if you if you vote to not recommend it, um, then they can still pass it, but they have to do so by a two-thirds supermajority. Yeah. Okay. And, and certainly, we've had extensive conversation with Councilmember McConnell, mm -hmm. you know, over this even before we even start buying the land. Actually, so we so wanted his buy-in. What we're looking at there typically, as well. Typically. When, it, when, a, when parcels get accumulated by a single body, the property in the middle gets abandoned through an agreement such as this. Yeah. This is not something we haven't done hundreds of times before when there's a consolidation. Timing of it is the question. Yeah. And I do think that we've lost a lot of alleys through that consolidation. I mean, I can think of a number where I kind of wish we had kept that alley now that we need to do loading and trucks and it's a lot busier with pickup and drop off. Um, well, cer certainly during our use, there's not going to be for the loading of trucks or anything there. That's not something that we're looking to do. Right. Yeah. But I mean long term, because, you know, once yeah. this, this is a city street, and so once we don't have the city mm -hmm. street, if at some point the RTA doesn't happen and we sell the property and it ends up being something else, um, that's we've now lost the ability to have a, a street there for people to drive or for drop, drop off. Mr. Starks, let me, yeah. where's the legislation as far as council goes right at this point? It's getting, you know? getting ready to be filed with council. Getting ready to be filed. Yes, it hasn't no. gone through a reading or anything. It has not yet, no. All right. So we've had some discussion. Is there anyone want to make a motion? I mean, I hate to be the grouch, but I would, I would move to disapprove until there's, until we're ready to have a project there, but in the kind of unknown future um, I don't feel comfortable. I would vote okay. against it. All right. So we have a motion to disapprove. Is there a second to that motion? Second. We have a first and a second. Okay. Any further discussion to this motion? All right. All right. No further discussion. We'll take a vote. All in favor of the motion? Please aye. say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Not opposed, so it it is passed. Your motion's passed. Okay, thank you. So we're going to say no. All right. Next item is we have appeals. Appeal number one is an appeal for a reevaluation re of existing one-hour parking time limit on the south side of Harrison Street between Third Avenue North and Criddle Street, requested by a resident. Is there anyone here to speak to that? Okay. If you two would step forward, please state your name for the record. Yeah. Turn your mic on, please. It's the red button, the one that turns red. Okay. I'm Tom Fritz. And I'm Lynn Fritz. Uh, I represent sort of two entities, one the Homeowners Association across the street, District Lofts, and also as business owners right across the street from there as well. Thank you. And if you would discuss your concerns or. Yeah. Um, there was a recent change in the parking um, from unrestricted parking to one hour parking. And um, the effect on the residents there, there are 72 units in District Lofts Association, of which I'm a member of the board. And at the annual meeting, they asked to um, propose that that be not restricted after six o'clock and also be limited to three hours parking instead of one. Um, the reason for that is because over the last, since district loss was built in 2008 primarily, you know, residents use that in the evening as overflow parking for their vehicles, um, guest parking, those kinds of things. Um, as a business owner, Dabble Studio right across the street, Dabble Tours and Events, we have two types of businesses. One is three hour food tours and the other is cooking classes and paint and sip classes, which also are three hours in length. Generally those occur, um, the tours occur throughout the day and the cooking and painting classes occur usually after six o'clock. So for us, the same sort of a, a recommendation would, would be ideal because we've been using it that way for the five years that we've been located there. 
uh, unrestricted, and a three-hour restriction would make a better use for our business. And an after six o'clock, non-restricted would be in line with what it used to be over to the other side. It was rest not restricted after six o'clock or on weekends. And so uh, that's what we would request. My recollection is this is pull-in parking coming off of Harrison Street, is that correct? Yes. Okay. What is there, six, seven, eight there's spaces? nine spaces, seven, okay. seven to nine spaces, yeah. How long ago was that permit, or was the restriction added, do, do we know? Is that recent, or is it? About that. Um, that the restaurant changed recent. hands across the street, and with the new ownership, I think there, there was a change there. Corby, we're trying to get to third and Harrison. That'll help tell the story. So you, you have some metro-owned property that appears to be privately owned, and you, you sound like you've seen it. I, I used to manage the, okay. the Harrison Street right. Homeowners yeah. Association, so okay. I'm very familiar with that. You're almost there, Corby. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so <laughs> the, the change in ownership or whatever, the change in use of that property on the corner is now a restaurant. And the restaurant came to us, correct, wanting one hour or limited parking of some sort. The business next to it, help me out, an attorney's office maybe, is currently signed one hour parking. So, the, so I had somebody visit me in the office and they wanted to convert the one hour parking to three hour parking and said that they would accept two hour parking. And the business that we're talking about on the other side said um, they would prefer to keep it at one hour. So that's why we're here. Uh, Zoom out, yeah. Corby, please. It's yeah, there the cars are cars that are parked facing the building, correct? Facing yes, the correct. facing the sports restaurant across the street there, yeah. And there were two different restrictions in the past. The ones in front of the attorney's offices were always one hour restricted until six o'clock, Monday through Friday. And the other ones in front of and across from uh, the other two businesses there never had any restriction on them at all. So the surrounding perimeter around the, the housing, the condos or whatever, that's um, residential parking only. It is, yeah. That's permit parking only. Across the street where you see those 90 degree parking spaces, today they're signed at one hour parking. We've got a request to change the time on them and we've got opposition to do that. And that's why we're hearing the testimony from both sides. And just for commission's information, 3rd, 4th, and Harrison is all signed as residential permit parking. So who, who else is here to speak about this matter? Okay. If you would step forward and state your name for the record, please. My name's Michael Walker. I uh, own a law office, uh, one of the three law offices that are right there on Harrison Street. And... Um, yeah. I'm in favor of keeping the one hour. Um, there's already a problem uh, with parking as it is now, and just increasing the hours would cause more of a problem. Uh, we've, it, there's nothing more frustrating than have a client pull up for an appointment and not being able to find a place to park and then leaving uh, out of the frustration, you know, handling criminal defense and divorce cases. These people are already... Uh, kind of at wit's end, and when they can't get uh, parking where they're trying to go, it just, uh, sometimes they just uh, get frustrated and leave. And, um, you know, with the, the Jonathans coming into place, there's already more traffic in the area, and I think just extending more of an invitation to stay longer uh, it would, would cause more of a problem for the business owners right there on Harrison Street. Um, you know, it's, I think it's been in place more than six months, the one hour limitation. Uh, since then, that has not been uh, monitored at all. There's two deserted cars right there right now that are backed in with flat tires and expired tags from 2016 and no tags at all. So there's already two cars that are sitting there every day. Um, it's very limited parking for four street level office condos right there that are trying to conduct business. And I think the one hour that's already in place uh, would, would best be served to stay in place. All right. thank, thank you. Is there a concern with churn? I mean, is, are the spaces just occupied and not churning? There, there's, there's a couple of places and that- All, all three churning. of you can speak to that. Uh, 
most of them are evolving as people go and, and get uh, food at Jonathan's. Uh, it's a come and go, about an hour stay. And then, of course, most clients uh, in the law offices will stay, you know, up to an hour for the consultation. Um, so it is it is churning. Uh, some days it, it remains stagnant for whatever reason. There'll be cars that come in and then they don't end up leaving for a while. And I think sometimes word gets around in the uh, area that, hey, look, you can just park across the street and leave it. Your car will be fine. And so that's when those signs that came up uh, within the past year have, have become a little bit helpful. Um, but uh, there again, uh, I think the one hour was, was appropriate when it was set. Yeah, if I may, you know, there, there are two different uh, properties there. The Harrison Square condominiums have always been one hour parking. And the offices there are mostly law offices or um, insurance offices and things where there's consultation. The restaurant's a, a sports bar uh, kind of a setup where people stay longer. Our business across the street is clearly, you know, geared towards three hours. That's the part that changed. And, um, it, you know, there is churn definitely in that area, except that about six o'clock at night, it starts to fill in with residents who are done, you know, with their day of work and they don't have other parking, so the residential parking overflow comes in there about six o'clock, and, and things don't really move too much after six o'clock um, sometimes there on either either of those parcels. And just to be clear, we're not looking to make a change to the signage that's in front of the law office or the insurance business. We would just appreciate your consideration of uh, making that change to three hours directly across from our business in front of the um, sports restaurant. Okay. Can I get some clarification about where the locations of each of these businesses are? Can someone help with the map? Yeah, this will, t this will hopefully help on ground. To your right are the, the condos, apartments, and there's that is now a Jonathan's keep, which, yeah, go back a little bit further. Yeah. Nope. The other, anyway, what it says pastime to your right, Corby. That is not there anymore. It's a Jonathan's restaurant. Okay. Keep spinning to your right, Corby. To, yeah, let's look right. And right, see that see this 90 degree parking down through here? Yes. Those signs probably say no parking there. I can't quite see them. Now they say one hour parking. This where that Jeep or that Nissan is, right. is, is now residential parking only. Okay. And then our business is directly across, across from, from Pastime. Pastime, which is now Jonathan's. Right, that's been a restaurant for some time, probably three years. Uh, changed hands, always a sort of a sports theme. But the law offices and the real estate offices haven't changed uh, their complexion either. The only thing that changed was the parking in front of and directly across from our business in front of the our restaurant. Where is your restaurant again, please? Yeah, ours is not a restaurant. It's at the corner on the other it's, side. It's directly, directly across, across from your, what is now Jonathan's. So it's on oh, the other side of the street. Yep. Is it right there? On the, the corner there? Dabble Studio? Is yes, that you? Sir. Yes. Okay. Right We're, I'm just trying to get bearings here so we can understand. Okay. So is your request for the section of the street directly in front of Dabble Studio? Acro Correct. Across the street. Directly Along across. our curb is resident permit parking. And, and we okay. try and be a really you know good neighbor and make sure that our guests don't park in the areas that they sh that are restricted from them but um, really the yeah. only place that our guests can use is across the street and they're generally there for a cooking class from six to nine o'clock at night from a tour from you know ten o'clock to one o'clock or something like that and uh, one hour parking doesn't okay. really work for our business it hasn't been that way for five years and so it's kind of a strain on our business All right. Does this mean you're sharing park? You're proposing to share parking with Jonathan's. Well, it's, we've always used that parking for our use before Pastime was there, before Jonathan's was there. I mean, it's it's not really mm -hmm. it's shared parking because the municipality owns it. It's yeah, not, our, it's not our understanding parking. is it, it's not designated. But that's the only parking that we have um, available for free. For any it, of our it looks parking. like private parking, but it's public. It's public park. Correct. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay, staff. Thank you. So, I don't want to throw us. I don't want to confuse us even further. But in, in some cases in the past, we've gone with residential permit only, or two-hour non-permit, or whatever that time would be. Remember, we've had those cases before us too. Now, that would not probably be in front of the restaurants and attorney's office. I'm talking where there's currently residential parking. 
you might, you could, probably not today, but we could probably research this a little further to see if it could be residential parking only and then some distance or X hour parking non-permit. And we've done that in lots of places around town. And the residents also have the option of getting visitor's permits. They can get three visitor's permits for every one residential permit that they have, if that would help you any. I think the residential, and now put on my, my yeah. board hat, you know, it's more about after six o'clock. You know, it's not really the time because they're gonna be there 12 hours in reality, and they don't wanna be restricted during that time. After Jonathan's is closed, after we're closed, all of those spots, and, and after after Mr. Walker's um, business is closed, all those spots typically fill in with people who park there overnight. Mm -hmm. So I think the mm -hmm. residential um, request is more to have a six o'clock ending time to the restriction. After that, there's sports bars on the restaurants. You know, I would I would think likely to have longer duration as well. Um, we certainly do, um, but our our request as a business is more to uh, allow for time for our ongoing customers who are both local and visitors to be able to park for the duration of the time that they spend at our business. And, and honestly, just speaking again on behalf of the residents, we've, we've tried to be really careful about, you know, again, asking our customers to please not park where it's resident permit parking because they do rely on that parking. So um, I, I really wouldn't want to be responsible for them you know, losing that to our customers, honestly. I mean, I, I want our customers to have places we to also park, live, but. We also live across the street yeah. there, and I mean, I, I know that the residents would be um, disinclined to. Yeah, they wouldn't. Reduce the amount of residential parking. And so there. I'd it's hate to be responsible amount. for that. And more <laughs> residents being, tried to be a good there's 300 neighbor. more units being built across Third Avenue now, so. I, well, I do kind of wonder, to your point, with the whole north side being residential only 24 hours, whether it would be more efficient if there's businesses that need parking spots before 6 p.m. So I, I would be interested in exploring that option. And, and the reason I before 6 p. was hesitant about it is because I don't think they're fully represented here today. Mm -hmm. um, we're not, yeah. so we didn't have to hear from them. Because uh, I think my recollection from my past experience of that property is that one of the issues about why there was residential permit parking installed is that I think not trying to throw any employees under the bus, but I think people who work downtown, particularly maybe state, would park on the street and just park there all day long yeah. and leave their cars. And without any kind of uh, hook, I think it became an issue of there wasn't germ for other yeah, folks. Yeah. And I think that's right. And we were in favor of a three hour parking from the time that it was known that it would be restricted at all. I think that that's, is an issue. People park there free and walk mm -hmm. downtown. And I don't think anybody you know, wants that. There's plenty of parking, paid parking closer to downtown. Uh, and there's paid parking across the street too. But um, yeah, that is an issue. And that's why I think maybe a three hour would curb that. I think we do have other testimony for one. Is there other folks here to speak to this matter? Okay, thank you. If you just state your name for the record, please, sir. Uh, Tom King, and I'm on the board for uh, District Lofts, uh, same, same as TJ here. Um, one of the things just that you've already mentioned here that I'd like to, you know, really push is, is the point after six. Currently, there's no sign there except the one that says one hour parking. So what you have is overnight, you just have empty parking, you know, empty parking spots, legally. Everything should be empty there. So that's eight positions overnight and that just aren't being used. And in a downtown place, you know how important parking is. And it seems like a waste to have eight spots just empty all night. When, and you're talking, there's two sections here. The, one, the, the ones in the front of- that is open, and then your, your firm is closed probably at six o'clock or whatever. Right, the signs yeah. in front of the law offices are eight to five, one hour okay. parking. Oh, but I kind of think those have been, re that restriction's been, that sign's been taken off recently. No, it's still there. Does it still say eight to five? It does. Okay. But, but as he said, uh, as this gentleman said, we really don't have enforcement in the areas, so that's that's where where he probably runs into trouble where people just don't move their cars and then he, it hurts his business. So I think enforcement would help. I know we're shortage on Metro, but. Yeah. We've heard a lot of uh, comments about enforcement over the last yeah. several months. Um, okay. Is, let me, let are me. we looking at maybe trying to expand the scope of our conversation well, of I our think, discussion? I think in fairness, 
Jonathan's was invited, and I assume no one's here from Jonathan's. They haven't spoken up if they are. Um, and the councilman is out. So those are two big pieces of information that we're missing. Most of the time, I'll just give you a quick little background, the way it ended up the way it is. We side with the adjacent property owners on how they want that piece of asphalt or parking managed. Now, I'm not saying we always give it to them the way they want it. That's why we're here today. But that's how it ended up being one hour parking. We talked to the tenants adjacent to the property and Jonathan's wanted one hour and the firm wanted one hour and that's how we ended up here. Now where we go from here, that's why. That's up for debate again. But I just wanted you to know why it ended up being one hour. Because it's directly in front of their business. And that's what they requested, yes. But are you talking about Are you talking about the lot that Metro owns? Yeah, where the red trucks and stuff okay. in this aerial photo, all these ninety degree parked vehicles are Today is one hour parking. I don't know okay. what's in that picture. It looks like private parking, but it's on street parking because most on street parking is parallel, and this is the odd case. Jonathan's does have their own parking and a lot just inside. Uh, if you if you look at the lot with the cars in it, there, yeah. All right. Do we have a motion? I hate to say this, but since the council member's not here, I kind of would want to defer or at least get his input as the mediator. So I would defer one month to let council member O'Connell heal up and give us some. And, and that's why we wanted you guys to go ahead and speak if you can't come next month, because, uh, go ahead. Could I say one more thing though? Um, I think what, what, with Jonathan's, when they first put it up and they, you know, and we want to be good neighbors, don't get me wrong. We, we love Jonathan's being there. But when they first put the signs up there and they were like, Jonathan's only parking, and that, it was a bit inappropriate because you guys didn't approve it for that, that from my understanding. But, um, but now by, by making it look like it's open for everyone, what it says one hour parking, who is that really for? Who's gonna be able to park there one hour? Not their business, maybe someone for yours, but no one for their business can park there one hour. So re really what they've done is still created the same situation where it's their parking only. And, and that, that, that doesn't seem very fair for the community, for the other businesses overall. Okay, we have a motion to defer. Is there a second? Second. We have a first and a second. Any further discussion of that motion? Okay, all in favor? Aye. Okay, any opposed? Okay, we're gonna defer this. Thank you all for coming very, very much. It's very helpful to get input. Thank you. Thank you okay. for your time. Yes. Right. The next appeal is an appeal denial of driveway application at 2913 Branch Court requested by Brandon Rumbly. Is Mr. Rumbly here? Okay. What, he is not here now. Again, this went through development. We could go ahead and give the background on, on the case. If you got an extra minute or two, Devin, you uh, want to go ahead and give us this? with the low down is okay. on this one. Okay, so we could get a good map up, please. So Devin Doyle, Public Works. So the, um, uh, both the zoning code and the traffic and parking code is, is very s specific about how much linear footage of a residential piece of property can be dedicated towards um, driveway. Um, this was the original plan that was submitted and, and approved. It, it's, it's a piece of property that's zoned for duplex style residential development. There's a single uh, residential structure on the lot right now. And so they had proposed the construction of a second dwelling unit that was, that was in the previous drawing. And so the, the initial drawing that was submitted by their uh, surveyor or engineer showed a consolidated driveway in this configuration. And I believe the request now is to not construct that driveway configuration. They, they basically were going to build a new driveway um, that tied into the existing driveway. So there's only one point of access. And, and, and of course, this is a cul-de-sac lot. So roadway frontage is limited anyway. Um, as, as you know, when, when, uh, when you're um, in, a, in a curve of the road like this at, at the cul-de-sac. So, so technically the driveway was denied because it does not meet traffic and parking. Uh, regulations. Um, th 
again, let, let me just clarify again. What they're proposing there is fine. What their request is to not build that and to rather take that driveway that's outlined in blue directly to Branch Court so that that parcel would have two residential driveways that are separate and unique to the dwelling structure. That, that's the appeal that they're asking you all is to approve two driveways at this, at this location. When you, when you add up the, the width of those two driveways, it violates the traffic and parking code for the amount of linear footage along your frontage that you can have dedicated to driveways. Does that make sense? Now, just for practical purposes, for, for, for your sake, this lot was not flagged for sidewalk construction. You know, one, one of the benefits to having minimum number of driveways is you, you want to, Nora, you, I, well, I know all of you guys are very familiar, but Nora, I know from, from your background, you're, you're, you're very familiar with, you, you want to minimize the number of pedestrian vehicle conflicts. So we, we try to reduce the number of driveways. Branch Court is a cul-de-sac. It lies between Lytton and McGavick, I, I believe. It comes off of a side street. I don't think it has but maybe nine or ten homes on it today. Um, they're not they're not flagged for sidewalk construction, so they won't be building sidewalks. They're in a cul-de-sac. Um, I, it probably would not be the end of the world to allow a second driveway. However, because it does not meet code, we could not approve it. So basically, it's it's kind of in your hands to decide. And obviously, the applicant's not here, but that's kind of the background. Any questions, commissioners? So, staff recommendation is that you think this would be okay? I, I, mean, I think in this location, if you were ever going to, if you were ever going to allow this to happen, this is probably the ideal location. But it, yes. <clears throat> so. By code, driveway appeals come before you guys. Okay. Whether you like it or not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, we learned it's, it's, it's very rare that we kick rare. driveway denials to you guys. Corby, okay. let's go back to that uh, over that aerial shot. So, uh, the, where the flag is on top of that roof, another dwelling. Help me. Another dwelling. Let's poke another driveway out to the right of the correct. existing driveway. Now, Devin, would it be any more tight, for lack of better words, than the one to the left? No, t t t typically driveways in these locations uh, are anywhere from 10 to 12 feet wide. Um, so you will you will lose that grass area if, if you're looking at the existing driveway to the left and kind of there's some trees that kind of project up into what appears to be the cul-de-sac. You'll have another driveway connection right there. But gen generally speaking, we try to minimize, again, Chip, we try to minimize uh, multiple driveway access points because you have pedestrians, you know, you have a walking environment, so you don't want pedestrians walking on sidewalks, constantly walking over driveways. But there are no sidewalks in Branch Court. There, there's a good chance there will never be sidewalks in Branch Court. Again, there are only nine houses on this cul-de-sac, so, so the pedestrian conflict is really not, does not reach the, the level that we might see out in other places. I'm sorry to be asking you questions. I no, should ask back at the All audience right. before we get here. So is there a, do you have a question? Well, I mean, if it's against code, right, if we're being asked to essentially, if we were to approve this, we'd be going against code. Well, you, you are the appeals board, much like the Board of Zoning Appeals right. is to the zoning code. You know, what, so, uh, and, I don't know, Terry might be able to speak to some of this. You, you all, we, we, act, we act on your behalf, but you all act, and Terry, correct me if I'm wrong, you all act on, um, on behalf of the traffic and parking for variances to the traffic and parking code? So Is no, that correct, it doesn't Terry? say variance, it just says appeals. It says all appeals for driveway applications will be made to the traffic and parking commission. Appeals will be made only after the driveway application has been denied by the Department of Public Works. So it doesn't, okay, so it doesn't explicitly say that the Traffic and Parking Commission has authority to grant a variance from the provisions of the Metro Code. Okay. I don't, I don't know what the appeal would be for otherwise, but it, it, to me it's not clear. So they are, they are we denied the driveway. 
Yeah. They are that's appealing right. to you all to approve yes. it. So I don't know. Uh, you, no, you'll have to tell me whether the... Actually, in the Metro Code, the provision that they're, like the provision about the distances or whatever. So... I, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm asking Devin. I don't, I don't know. Oh, was that a question? I'm the, sorry. the way oh. in which it is um, non I think there's a percentage. The there's a percentage. Uh, I, I can't think of the section of Chapter 13. But it's actually, it's well, th Chapter 13, 12, it looks like. I'm not sure. I'm scrolling through the sections trying to find it. Yes, I think, I think there's a certain percentage of driveway frontage that can be dedicated to... I mean, a property frontage that can be dedicated to driveways. This is my understanding. Yeah, but that, that was my, that it's, this is not just a spec or something like this. This is actually a code provision. Yes, it's in the code. It's in, okay. it's in the traffic and parking code. Oh, hmm. It's like 30% or something. I, I, I can't remember what the number is. I'm not finding it, but I'm looking. <laughs> I'm slow, sorry. If I had my tab traffic and parking code, I can find it. Is there a motion? I, my sense is I don't know anything about this exactly, and if the staff feels like it's okay, I'm inclined to approve, but I don't know if you guys agree or disagree. Okay, we have a second. motion to approve. We have a second. Can I just yes. ask one more question? Yes, I didn't understand that you, I thought you guys denied it. We denied it because it doesn't meet the code. Okay. Mm -hmm. So. And they're appealing it to us. They're appealing our. Uh, they're appealing it, our decision to to you all. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then. I would. I I, I don't want to do it. So. What's what's the formal language okay. I need to use? So. We. We need a motion. We need a formal motion to either deny to. Uh, Continue that I don't know what the quite phrase is, you know, when we get these double negatives to a, a motion to um, what the, 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 the applicants made a, a, a motion has submitted a request to overturn the denial. Right. I think that these double negatives confound me. Right. Um, so Based on this discussion, we had a a motion to approve the request by Brandon Rumbling to allow the driveway to allow the driveway, and then there was a second. So we have that is a motion that's on the table, and we can have a discussion of that and a vote, and see how the vote goes, okay. and and then we'll go from there. Sure. Okay. All right, so we have a first and a second. Any further discussion? Okay. All in favor of the of mo the motion, I'm going to use simple language that would approve the driveway request by Brandon Rumbley. Please vote with your right hand. We have two, three. Okay. All opposed. Okay. Do I... It's three to two. I don't vote unless there's a tie. Is that correct? That is correct. Counselor, okay. So. You, are you, I'm sorry. You can vote to create or you can vote to create a tie. Okay. So if you if you want to vote with the no's, <laughs> you can vote. I, I like to vote when there's a tie. <laughs> That's my policy. Okay. So the driveway's been approved. Thank you. I'm going to have a policy and stick with it. <laughs> Okay. All right. Item three, a bill denial of always stop control at Taylor Street and 3rd Avenue North requested by Brett DePriest. That's you, Mr. DePriest. Please step forward, state your name for the record. My name is Britt DePriest, address is 1211 7th Avenue North. I am also a board member of the historic Germantown Neighborhood Association. Um, we are requesting an always stop be put in at the intersection of Taylor Street and 3rd Avenue North. There's currently stop signs on Taylor Street, so it stops traffic heading east-west. There's not a stop sign headed north-south on 3rd Avenue North. At our board meeting, 
I think it was January, where we decided to, to make this request. Um, the concern on this street is, there's actually two concerns. One is the limited visibility when you're traveling on Taylor Street. If you think about the intersection, there's four quadrants. So on one quadrant, we have a tall apartment building, Peyton Stakes. On the other quadrant, we have some mature street trees that are beautiful, but they do restrict vision when you're looking to the north. On another quadrant, we have a tall townhome project that's under construction now. So in three of the four quadrants of this intersection, you have limited visibility. The second factor that combines with that is the very human compulsion, which I think we all fall victim to, to get as quickly as you can from one stop sign to the next stop sign. So if you think about driving north on 3rd Avenue North, there is currently a stop sign at the intersection of 3rd and Monroe. The next intersection is 3rd and Taylor. That's the one we're talking about now. The next intersection is 3rd and Van Buren. So Monroe to the south of this and Van Buren to the north of this currently have stop signs. As a result, people floor it to get from Monroe to Van Buren. It creates a dangerous situation when you combine that with a limited visibility because people need to pull out into Third Avenue to look north and south to see if traffic is coming. Um, and we just believe that this could make this a safer intersection. Um, combine that with the fact that there are currently either under construction or will soon be under construction nearly 2,000 extra residences to the east of here on the river. Um, there's going to be a lot more traffic, both vehicular and pedestrian, using this intersection to get over into the heart of Germantown or even out to Rosa Parks to actually leave the neighborhood and go somewhere else. Um, our vote at the board meeting was unanimous in support of this. Um, we believe that it is, we know that this doesn't quite meet public works textbook definition of where you need to have an always stop. But Chip and Mac with Public Works have been great and they've worked with us on previous intersections where we've depended on this board to, to make that assessment for us that it, it is a qualifying intersection for a stop like this. We request that you do that again. Thank you very much. Uh, are there any conversations about traffic calming in this area? Uh, not that I'm aware of, but Jeff, Mr. Hammond says he's not aware of any. Okay. I tell um, you, let me tell you what. Give us some background, here. please. Um, the volume distribution didn't fall within the window. I always tell you guys about it. It was a 90 to 10 split. Of course, Third Avenue is a busy, busier roadway. The volumes themselves they were relatively low, so it's not like you're going to back traffic up blocks and blocks if you put in a stop sign. We. We just weren't able to put a 90-10 split as an approved recommendation, um, so we asked Mr. Priest to come in, come speak to you. You did see some emails from um, some residents out there that I sent around in favor of this. The councilman is in favor of the installation. I'll leave it up to you guys from there. There's probably other people here to speak on it, too. All right. I think in the interest of brevity, they'll, they'll let me speak, at least okay. the ones that I know of. You could just raise your hands if you are here in support of it. All right. All right. Is there a motion? Moved to approve. Second. We have a first. Is there a second? First second. and a second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? You have your stop sign. Thank you. Good luck in German town. All right. Okay. The next item on the agenda is a review discussion of our current valet operations outstanding balance. This is you, Mr. Ham. Who is discussing this item? I'm going to handle this for the staff. Um, at the beginning of the year, we had 12 valet companies providing operations for 55 different locations. We have sent out invoices twice to each of these. At this time, we have five valet companies that have not renewed their permits, and this represents a total of 10 different locations. If we do not receive a renewal of these locations by next month's meeting, we will bring those to the commissions for your approval to remove. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to ask a question that I ask, I think, most every month. Where are we on the uh, valet stand study that we requested several months ago? Mr. Please. Hamming has been working on that for us and I'm sure he can provide you additional information. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Hammond. Thank you for coming. 
Yes, sir, glad to do it. Good afternoon, uh, Jeff Hammond, Metro Public Works. Just a, an update, it's not very different from the update from last month. We have received uh, a little bit of additional uh, guidance from uh, the mayor's office who we he gave a draft uh, uh, copy of our, our recommended changes to the valet policy. So we're ready to move forward with you, uh, Mr. Chairman. What we intend to do is meet with you and perhaps uh, Mr. O'Connell from a, a council member standpoint and, and go over those draft recommendations with you. We're ready to do that. Um, uh, maybe later this week. And uh, with with your approval of those, I think, and we've worked through some of that with, with uh, council, uh, working hand in hand with the legal department. At this point, I think we're ready to draft a few minor changes to the code, put those in front of um, uh, the entire council and move forward uh, in that way. Okay, thank you. Any questions? Yes, okay, thank you very much. All right, we had a discussion of downtown bikeways, Peter Bird, Metro Planning, he is not here. So we'll ask that he come back next month. That would be, why don't we do, is that, yeah. you fine with that, other fellow commissioners? Yeah, okay, yes, good. all right, okay. Uh, item three, updates from the Nashville Downtown Partnership. Mr. Payne, thank you for your patience. Absolutely. Today, we've had some good discussion. Uh, when I was here last, uh, we talked about downtown parking and ways to accommodate the downtown workers. So I was coming to give you an update on what the Nashville Downtown Partnership has done. Um, and. Um, at first we were looking at, and we had been actively looking at, a shuttle system for downtown workers that we would run from the uh, courthouse garage. Uh, that would include part paying for parking as well as covering the cost for the shuttle program itself. Uh, we were at first going to launch that uh, potentially around April 6. However, uh, some things have changed downtown that we're going to hold off on launching that program, evaluate what the uh, inventory looks like in the downtown because the AT&T recently uh, switched ownership, the AT&T building right there at uh, 4th and Broad, and uh, or not at Broad, but 4th and Commerce rather, but there's that's very close parking to Broadway. And so they have about a thousand spaces they are opening up for parking in the evening. And their preliminary rates are going to be, I believe here, uh, $8 uh, after three o'clock on weekends and anytime Saturday and Sunday and then $10 all day. Uh, we're working with them to see how long we can keep those rates in effect. Uh, but uh, seeing as the AT&T parking is definitely more economically viable for both the patrons versus the shuttle program, and uh, also definitely uh, much more logistically closer, we think at this point in time, we're gonna hold off on the shuttle program evaluate it and see what happens with the AT&T parking and how well that's received. Any questions, commissioners? Just, just a really quick one. Was sure. the shuttle targeted for employees during the day or is it more for after hours? It was hours? mostly for evening. Yes. The evening, okay. Mm -hmm. And it was, would it be free to the patron or they pay for the shuttle? No, they would have to pay. Okay, got yeah. it. And the idea was pay for a portion of parking and a, the other portion go to cover the Got shuttle costs. So you pay like 15 something or whatever flat rate. Uh, yeah, I think we were thinking about $10 Ten, or okay. something like that. Okay, thanks. Um, but this is coming in under that, neath that, so it doesn't really make sense to try it just yet. All right, thank you for your update and for coming right. back. Thank you. thank you very much. All right, next item on the agenda, authorized removal of a valet zone at 1929 Broadway requested by Trinity Parking. Okay, if the commission would like, we can handle item four, five, six, and seven all in one vote if you would like. In each of these cases, the valet companies have advised they're no longer providing valet at these locations. Okay. Since commission approved these locations, commission has to approve removal. All right, I think, is there someone here to speak on any of these items? Okay, if you would step all right, well, we have item number, the first item is authorized removal of valet zone at 1929 Broadway requested by Trinity Parking. Is there anyone here on that item? 
Is there a motion? Move to uh, approve removal. Okay, we have a first. Is there a second? second. First and a second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay. All right, item number five, authorize removal of the valet zone at 222 2nd Avenue South in front of the green pheasant requested by parking management company. Do you here to speak to that? Yes, sir. Okay, please step forward and state your name. I'm Michael Hayes with CB Raglan Company, CBT Partners, and 222, second. What's your concern about this? So, uh, we're the building owner on both sides of the street. Um, one of the zoning conditions that we had with planning and public works was that we have a notch in the curb for the valet. Uh, my concern is that with the removal of the valet sign, uh, it becomes free on-street parking. Uh, we've done a good job. We own both sides of Malloy Street here, uh, self-managing, self-regulating, so I, I don't mind pulling the valet zone out, but would like to, if we're gonna remove that signage, replace it with a loading zone sign. Okay, since the original application for the valet was with Parking Management Company, if you wanna convert that to a loading zone, we would need an application to convert it to a loading zone. And then we would bring that to the commission at next month's okay. meeting. It, is there a reason why this valet zone is going away? Is it the green pheasant closed? There, no, there just has not been a tremendous demand for valet parking because we have an 1100 car self parking garage. Okay. So when we went through the zoning process with public works and planning, we had a valet zone at 2nd and Malloy, so there's a physical notch in the sidewalk that's similar to the one that you guys approved for the Southern. Um, but we have one here, and we have a secondary one in the, in the building. And what we found is that, that it's not heavily used um, for lunch or dinner, you know, 20 cars a day, and it wasn't economically viable to run the valet. Uh, it would be a benefit to the ben businesses on both sides for it to become uh, labeled as a loading zone so we can fill out an application and, and bring that to you guys to just replace the signage. All right, thank you. Hey, one question, if you guys approve it, when does the signage go away? Ms. Approximately Mark. 10 days after it's removed. Okay. Commission approves it, then the signs will be removed. Okay, thank you. Okay. Is there a motion? Move to approve the removal okay. of the ballet zone. Is there a second? Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Thank you, Mr. Hayes, for coming today. Appreciate it. Sure. Item six, authorized removal of ballet zone at 2312 Ellison Place in front of Nama Sushi requested by Parking Management Company. Is there anyone here to speak to that item? Not, is there a motion? Move to approve. We have a motion, is there a second? First and a second, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Item seven, authorized removal of ballet zone at 1530 Division Street in front of Patterson House requested by parking management company. Assume there's no one here to speak to this item. That said, is there a motion? I, I have a question. Yes. So when we're removing these ballet zones, were meters there at one time that had been pulled? There were not any meters at any of these locations. Okay, okay. thank you. Um, authorized, oh, oh, oh. So, I, <laughs> move to approve. I move to approve. <laughs> okay, there's a motion to approve the removal. Right. Is there a second? Second. A first and a second, all in favor? Aye. Any? Any opposed? Okay, none. All right, we had a, we plowed through it. Thank you all very, very much. And officer? Move to adjourn. We have a motion to approve, to adjourn. When it's been approved, we are going home. Thank you. This has been a service of the Metro National Network. If you would like to see this presentation again, or for more information about this and other programs, visit nashville.org.